Well, hey everybody, my name is Aaron Newcomb, and on today's episode, I'm going to take a little break from retro computers and talk about something else that's retro, and that is my favorite movie, or one of my favorite movies of all time, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which turns 35 years old. Uh, I guess technically, June, I think it's June 11th was when the movie was originally released. So 35 years ago today, the movie was released. And uh, so I thought we'd do something a little different, maybe build something from the movie. Should be a lot of fun. It's coming up right now on the Retro Hack Shack. Ferris Bueller's Day Off is easily one of my favorite movies of all time. Directed by the infamous John Hughes and released on June 11, 1986, it captures so clearly the dream of every student to skip school and do something fun one last time before graduation. It came out when I was a freshman in high school and I loved it so much that I memorized all the lines and would often quote them with my friends as we passed each other in the hall. I even took a day off myself at one point to see what kind of trouble I could get into, but all I really ended up doing was riding my bike around town wishing that my friends were with me. I even made my own soundtrack since there was no official soundtrack ever released for the movie. It had all the songs from the movie and interspersed were lines from the movie from the different characters that appeared right around the time that the song was playing. Something D-O-O -O economics. Voodoo economics. <laughs> Many people think of Ferris Bueller as one of those smart, popular kids in high school that everything just seems to go right for. But I would argue that he was also a hacker. Think about it. Ferris hacked into the school computer to change his absence record, rigged a dummy to make it look like he was still in bed, did some phone freaking. Ferris Bueller's online too. created a costume to fool Rooney into getting his girlfriend out of school, and of course, hacked his intercom system to play a message when people rang the doorbell. So today, I want to recreate that intercom hack using modern technology and install a similar system outside my house so that when other Ferris Bueller fans come to the door, they can experience that same nostalgia for the movie that I have. Now, I've already hacked together my own doorbell that plays random sounds when someone presses it using a few Arduino-compatible ESP8266 modules and a small speaker. I'll go over how that works in a minute. I want to add a second device to the mix that looks and acts just like the intercom on Ferris Bueller's Day Off, so that when people walk up to my house, they have a choice of the regular hack doorbell or the new Ferris intercom doorbell. So now let's take a look at the different things I'll be using to build this project. Now, if you remember on a recent video I did, I actually took an old modem that kind of looked like Kit from Knight Rider and actually made it look more like Knight Rider and even sound like Knight Rider by using a microcontroller to light up the LEDs and also play some music. And we're going to be doing something similar to that with this project. So the first thing I needed was a box to use for the project, and I wanted it to look as much like the movie as I could. So I went with this new tone intercom box. Now it's not exactly the same as the one in the movie and there's a good reason for that. I'm gonna need some room to put the components inside this box. And while I did look up and thought about purchasing the exact style of intercom box that's used in the movie, it's so narrow that I didn't think I would be able to fit a battery and some of the other components that we need to bring this project to life. So I went with this one instead, which looks very similar but is about twice as deep as the actual one used in the movie. I'm going to need a microcontroller to make this work. So I'm going with an ESP32. This is the MCU-32S development board, but you could really use any of these boards for this project. The other thing we're going to need is this. This is the sound module. These things are pretty cool. This is actually uh, basically a sound player on a chip almost the size of my fingernail. This tiny little module is actually able to have an SD card with the sounds on it, and it also on the other side has a built-in amplifier. So this will not only play the sounds, if we had multiples it would play multiple sounds for us in any order we wanted, but it also has the built-in amplifier so we can hook this speaker up directly to this board and we don't have to worry about any other components. So this is doing a lot of the work. 
And then lastly, we need a way to power this. So this is going to be a 18650 lithium ion battery that's going to power all of this. And all of these components should be able to fit inside the case. So they're invisible to the person as they walk up to the door and press the doorbell. That's also why I've taken the pins off of these boards. Usually these boards come with the pins installed, but I've removed the pins with my desoldering gun so that I can stack these up and make them much, much narrower. And I also don't risk the shorts happening by having all of those pins kind of flapping around in the breeze. I don't have to build a special box to go around this. I'll be able to stack this up in such a way that I can fit this right inside here and save a lot of space. By coincidence, one of the nice things I discovered by doing it this way is that the power pins and the ground pins actually line up exactly uh, by stacking these things on top of each other. So that'll make assembly a lot more easy. Now, of course, that's just the doorbell side of things or the intercom side of things. I also want to be able to notify somebody in the house that somebody is at the door. And to do that, I'll be communicating back to my existing doorbell that I've hacked together. We're gonna to be building something to send that information at the same time that we're playing the sound through the speaker. We'll be able to send a doorbell signal back to the doorbell unit that's on the wall. And this will play the doorbell sound so that someone will know that there's somebody at the door. So there's a sender part of this, which is on an ESP32. And there's also my existing receiver part of this, which is an ESP8266. So I'll just be reusing what I've already built. I will post the code for both of these so that if you wanted to implement this yourself, you'd be able to do it, even though I already have this part done. I was able to repurpose my existing doorbell when I built this because all of these components fit inside and this just hangs on the wall like a normal doorbell. So it looks like a doorbell, but the guts have been completely replaced with modern microcontroller technology. In order to communicate from the ESP32 that's running the intercom, to the ESP32 that's actually inside the house, I'm gonna be using a protocol called ESP Now. Now you might think it would be easier simply to connect to the Wi-Fi and send commands back and forth that way, but actually there's a couple of advantages that ESP Now has over traditional Wi-Fi. The first is that there is no Wi-Fi. <laughs> what I mean by that is Wi-Fi actually adds a lot of time and trouble uh, into the process because you have to log in to the Wi-Fi, negotiate, get an IP address, and then communicate with the other device on the other side of the network. By eliminating all of those steps, uh, you can use ESP now and still get the advantages of a packet-based communication scheme, um, but without having to worry about Wi-Fi. It also offers encryption and some other things if you want to use those. Now this is going to save us a lot of time. So not only is it going to save us time and from the fact that we're not using Wi-Fi, but it's also going to save us time because the protocol itself is very basic, simple, and therefore very fast. And that's important because in the end, we're going to be running this off of battery. And the quicker we can get this up and running and then shut it off again, the less battery we're going to use. Wi-Fi in particular, a Wi-Fi transceiver, um, actually uses a lot of power when it's on. And I don't wanna have to go change the battery every uh, week or so. I wanna be able to have this thing run for at least a couple of months without me changing the battery around. So that's really important. Ta the time element and using as little resources on this board as possible to keep the power draw down is really going to help make this last a long time in between charging up the battery. So how is this thing going to work? Well, initially, the board that's inside the intercom is going to be asleep. This is the same principle that my regular doorbell works with. It actually is in deep sleep mode most of the time in order to save as much energy as possible. So when someone comes up and presses the doorbell, that will wake up the ESP32 and that will start to run its program exactly one time through. The first thing it's gonna do is use ESP now to communicate with the other ESP32 that's inside my house and that will trigger the doorbell so that people inside know that there's somebody at the door no matter which doorbell the person at the door actually pressed. The second thing it's going to do is it's going to talk to the media player module and it's gonna go ahead and start playing that sound. This will actually be a recorded sound from the movie that's playing Ferris Bueller's words into the speaker. Who is it? And so the person sitting at the door who hopefully is a Ferris Bueller fan will hear that and maybe get a chuckle. 
Once it's done playing that, the ESP32 in the intercom will go back to sleep and wait until someone else comes along and presses the intercom button. And once I get everything set up, I'll also measure the current draw of one of these cycles. That way I can see how long a battery might actually last before I have to change it again. Well, here's what the ESP32 board with the uh, audio module looks like when it's all put together. Uh, it's not very neat, I know. I don't really care. No one's going to see it. Uh, I was careful to double check my connections. Everything looks to be okay. You can see here that I used a leftover lead, a nice thick sturdy one to attach the board to ground here. And then over here, I did the same thing, although it's harder to see. Right here, I did the same thing with three volts. So the board itself is really sturdy. I can get the SD card in and out if I ever want to put additional sound files on it or anything like that. So it's pretty small and pretty compact, especially when you compare it to my previous uh, effort, which was the doorbell itself inside the house, which looks like this. Not very compact. You know, I was just basically testing it out, and then instead of tidying everything up and making it look good, I just kind of threw it in the box because I had plenty of room to kind of let this stuff float around in there. Or actually, I did, I did paste some of this stuff down or tape some of this stuff down to keep it from floating around. But anyway, you can see how much neater this one is than, than that one. And if you look in the case here, this part will just fit in right here on the bottom. And then the battery can fit. Ooh, that's a strong magnet. Ooh, that's a really strong magnet. <laughs> I bet this speaker is going to be really loud. Anyway, um, the battery can sit, you know, on one of these sides here. And I can even glue or tape the battery holder to the inside or something like that so it doesn't come out. Wow. Okay. I think we got to try this thing out now and see how loud it is. Okay, I heard a beep. Whoa, there's the doorbell. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's pretty loud, too. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't come to the door right now. I'm afraid that in my weakened condition, I could take a nasty spill down the stairs and subject myself to further school absences. <laughs> that's awesome. Stopping by. I appreciate your concern for my well-being. Have a nice day. That's so loud. I think I may have woken some people up upstairs. Okay, but now um, I can see by the LEDs that this is in sleep mode. Actually, I might want to take that LED off because that LED is going to be sucking juice while this is in sleep mode. So that might be something I want to take off to reduce some power. But anyway, let's just see if the wake up function works by pressing this button. Sure enough, it works just fine. Well, unfortunately, my meter wasn't working, so I had to break out this USB power meter by Drock. It's something I use occasionally, and the display isn't working very well on it. Uh, anyway, in idle, it, uh, I'm measuring 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps. And when this is turned on, it's going, it's peaking at about 40 milliamps. And that goes on for like, I don't know, a minute or something like that. Only when the button is pressed. So most of the time, this thing is going to draw, um, 20 milliamps. So I'm actually going to desolder the red LED and see if I can get that a little bit lower. Well, this is still sitting at 20 milliamps and, you know, it does have to charge the, the USB uh, chip here and the uh, power regulator itself is going to take up a lot of current. So that might be as good as we can do, unfortunately. So at first I wasn't sure where this 20 milliamps of current draw was coming from. And 20 milliamps might not seem like a lot, but let's put that into context of the battery that I'm currently looking at using in this project. So just to put that in perspective, if we take a look at the battery I want to use in this project, which advertises itself as a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and we divide that by 20 milliamps, you can see that this battery will only last 250 hours. So we divide that by 24, you can see that I'm gonna to have to change the battery on this every 10 days, just with 20 milliamp hour draw. 
So that's not going to work. I don't want to do that. And sure enough, when I look at the manual, um, I figured out where the 20 milliamps was coming from. And that is the media player module that I'm using. So it says right here, the, the standby current is 20 milliamps. And that's exactly what we're seeing. So even if I take out everything else, uh, go down to bare bones, I'm still going to have to draw 20 milliamp hours to keep that media module going all the time and ready to play some sound. So one way to solve this is to use a, yet another microcontroller to control the power uh, by means of a MOSFET or a relay. In other words, the other microcontroller would just turn the power on long enough for this device to play its sound and then that could go into a deep sleep mode and shut off the MOSFET or relay so shutting off the power to everything else um, that would be one way to solve this and it would be kind of interesting um, you can see here that the AT Tiny 85 microcontroller for example when is it is put to sleep only draws around five microamps at 3.3 volts so it is really, really low power device when you put it in sleep mode. So just to compare that to the uh, other calculation that we did, uh, if I take the same milliamp hour battery um, and then divide that by five microvolts, you can see that this will actually last a million hours um, if we were to do it that way. Of course, it doesn't include actually the actual time when the uh, uh, the sound is playing, but that only plays for like a minute at a time. It's not like everyone's going to be coming up using this intercom all the time. So, you know, I think that's a pretty good budget. If we divide that by 24 hours, um, you can see that that will last around 41,000 days. So not bad. So now I'm faced with a choice. Do I keep the battery and try to uh, do a complicated workaround with multiple microcontrollers that might be difficult for some people to implement? Or do I keep this a little bit easier and allow people that are maybe know a little bit about microcontrollers uh, to be able to implement this on their own? I think that's the route I'm going to go down. After all, this is about recreating that experience of the intercom. And it's not really about trying to get a very long running project off of a single battery. That would be something for another project, maybe. And if you want to see something like that, just let me know by leaving a comment down below. So in order to power this thing, I want to use my original doorbell transformer, and that's about a 12 volt AC transformer. That means that I'm going to need to regulate that power down to five volts DC in order to run this board. So to do that, I went to my project bin and pulled out this old board uh, that already has space for a full bridge rectifier and a five volt linear regulator to get the job done. It's always nice to reuse projects like this when you can. And here's a look at the case with all the parts fitted inside. I'll use a little bit of adhesive to hold down all the parts to the sides of the intercom. Now it's time to actually mount the intercom to the wall. So I picked out a spot next to the front door and then went around to the garage, which just happened to be on the other side of this wall. And of course, in my cluttered garage, you can see the power supply over there and then over here, right behind the water heater, is about where I need to mount that intercom box. So after checking for studs behind this uh, wall here, I went ahead and did the drilling, even though I was a little bit concerned about water pipes and hitting the water heater. I ended up using a fairly long drill bit, so I just left it in after I had broken through to the other side so I could find the hole easier. And you can see how close I came to hitting the water heater. I guess I dodged a bullet on that one. But one thing I did was I used some tape to tie the wire I wanted to feed through the hole to the end of the drill bit. It's a little tip I learned while I was working as a business telephone technician. Then I can just pull the drill bit out through the hole and it brings the cable along with it. So no worrying about fishing that thing through. Then I can just tie a little knot in it so it doesn't slip back through to the other side. After securing the mounting bracket with some anchors and some screws, I could finally connect up the wires and this thing is finally ready to test. It's Aaron Newcomb Ferris. I'd like to have a word with you. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't come to the door right now. I'm afraid that in my weakened condition, I could take a nasty spill down the stairs and subject myself to further school absences. Save it, Ferris. Get down here. You can reach my parents at their places of business. Thank you for stopping by. 
I appreciate your concern for my well-being. I'm not leaving until you agree to be on the Retro Hack Shack. Have a nice day. There's a lot of houses in my neighborhood that actually have these intercom boxes, and they're still using them today. So to avoid any confusion, I went ahead and put a sign up just so people knew that if they were fans of Ferris Bueller, they could hit this button to get a special greeting. Well, the new Ferris Bueller doorbell slash intercom system is installed, and I think it's great. I've been wanting to do this actually for a few years now, um, and it just shows what you can do by reusing some of the tricks you learn along the way. Uh, by using a microcontroller and a little sound player, you know, I've been able to build, even just on this channel, three or four different projects. I think three projects now using basically that same combination and lots of other stuff around the house, too. I use it mostly to bring things to life or uh, to kind of use as a building a prop or, or to make something do something like the doorbell today. Bring that to life, make it play a sound that it never would have played on its own and have a little fun along the way. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. I hope you try to build this yourself. I will post all of the uh, scripts and programs that I used, links to where to buy stuff or where I found stuff if, if they exist. I'll post that in the description below so that you can build this yourself if you want to. I will say it's not necessarily for beginners. ESP now is a little bit of a higher learning curve, but hey, don't let that stop you. If you wanna jump into this project and make it come to life, go do it. You can do it if you try hard enough. The resources are out there on the web. If you like this uh, video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or become a patron. That would really help me buy some much needed equipment that I need for the channel. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash retrohackshack and sign up. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.